right, hello and welcome to the next edition of Distri Insights. Uh, this week we are joined by Nick Richardson, CEO and co-founder of Kids Insights, a market intelligence firm specialising in the kids, parents and family sector. Uh, Nick, thank you very much for joining us. I know you're very, very busy at the moment, so appreciate uh, your, your time. Uh, it would be great if you give us a, a quick intro into Kids Insights and yeah, give us an idea of the sort of work that you do. Sure. Um, well, nice to, nice to be here. Um, so, yeah, sure, Kids Insights, what we do every week is we survey 5,000 children, uh, 5,000 different children, that is, every week across 13 countries. Uh, and that means that we're surveying just under 300,000 a year. And what that does is it gives a unique ability to provide our data back to our clients in real time via our portal. And it also means that every month our team of expert research and strategists are providing market intelligence reports, looking at all things going on in the kids' ecosystem. And that's probably an important part important point to make is that um, sometimes market intelligence will just focus on say gaming or toys or publishing we actually take a viewpoint that we try and look at everything from the kid or the parent's perspective because at the end of the day if a child or parent has 30 minutes or 10 pounds to spend they won't just look at um, gaming or toys they will look at what they want to do at that particular time so we always try and look at um, everything and therefore we can look at uh, how things correlate and how things affect each other Okay, uh, and then in terms of the markets you're you're covering, um, I, I think I see that you've you've been launching into some some new regions. Yeah, so we're in uh, U.S., Canada, Mexico, Brazil, U.K., France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Russia, India, China, and Australia. Um, so pretty comprehensive. Yeah. Um, with with plans to launch another uh, seven or eight markets next year. Um, so just really based on we tend to follow the G20 as a rule. Um, but, it, but it tends to be based on, on client feedback um, and it's you know all relatively done from, from Manchester in terms of where our research and tech team is. We have experts on the ground who we collaborate with as well, but uh, yeah, all done from the UK. Okay. Uh, and you know, of course, uh, I see you and the team have been pretty busy uh, publishing a number of, uh, of reports, especially with Q3 wrapping up. Um, It'd be very interesting to just to get some, you know, obviously some some highlights from you, you know, covering electronics and obviously other kind of categories. So if you could share some of the, the sort of main trends you've come across, that'd be great. Sure. Well, this year has been a year where everything has changed so significantly. Um, but in many ways, how we've seen it is it's really accelerated some of those trends um, that were already in play. So we look at the digitalization of um, all of our ecosystems, but specifically children. Um, and what's, of course, very interesting with children is that unlike us who've, who've grown older and then technology is starting to play a bigger part of our lives, technology is there very much from the early, early stages of their, their development. Um, and having got a two-year-old daughter, um, I can <laughs> very much uh, appease that. But, uh, you know, we can see that nearly 60% of three-year-olds in the UK, for example, own their own tablet. Uh, which just as, as an example really just shows how um, the content which they're consuming is becoming so much more fragmented um, in terms of the choice that they have. And I think some of the, some of the key trends that that then forms is the, the personalization piece, uh, which we're seeing. The co-creation is, is a huge trend that we're seeing with you know, the number of children who can now code from a young age and they're looking to you know, collaborate and create their own uh, games or parts, dimensions of their games. Um, and then you've, of course, got uh, mobile gaming is continuing to drive girl gamers, a uh, huge increase. I think eight out of 10 girls in the US are, um, are, are gaming regularly. Mm -hmm. And then elements like generation speakers, we've referred to it, how you know, generation type used to control my device with my uh, typing my fingers away. Then you had generation swipe and now you've got generation speak. And, and on that, we can see that 38 percent of all children um, are controlling their tablets by their um, or their devices by their voice, and but when you look at the younger children, it's uh, it's close to uh, it's significantly grown about eighty percent this year in terms of those children pre preferring to control their uh, their devices by their voice. So you can really see how how these trends are accelerating, and the power of content and the choice that children have now is so significant. And uh, I think one of the one of the big things that we're seeing is how everything is really starting to become quite blurred. Um, you know, where does a game start and stop? Where does social media start and stop? Um, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult to, to tell the difference. And that's hard for, for us maybe to, to see the difference. But when you look at that from a child's perspective, you know, Fortnite to them is no longer just a computer game. It's where they go to hang out with their friends, to chat, to talk. Uh, it's where they go to, uh, you know, watch films. It's 
it's where they go to watch music concerts um just maybe how some of us have used social media ourselves so there's um there's so much change going on it's uh, it's it's difficult to keep uh, to keep on top of it um but that's what we, that's what we try to do okay uh, and you you know touched on um you know tablets and uh, smartphones and um you know sort of smart speakers as being sort of three certainly three key categories which you know <laughs> Amazing, even at sort of at, at, at three, that these these devices are sort of you know owned or uh, are sort of sought after. But are you seeing any other um, uh, products or particular categories kind of creeping on on the sort of uh, electronic side or even beyond that? That uh, are, are they surprising or indicative of of upcoming trends? Yeah, I think when it comes to the tech ownership, you know, wearables is is growing um, significantly. Uh, we've seen um, you know inc significant increases in Fitbits in, in our data this year, um, and and previously consoles have been a little bit flat. But this year, I think with COVID and a lot more children obviously being at home, um, you know, we have seen you know the fight back of the consoles probably driven a little bit by some of the price promotions activity before the new consoles have been launching and the excitement of the the new uh, Sony and. Uh, Microsoft uh, consoles, which are coming out, be interesting to see how long that they remain uh, in, in terms of that that, that excitement around them. Um, uh, but I, and then you've had things like laptops. We've seen a huge increase in, in laptops this year, as obviously more children doing homework uh, and, and working remotely. And that that's led, led into one of our predictions for next year about the growth of edutainment. Um, I, I think it's uh, going to be a huge, interesting opportunity. We've seen some gaming platforms uh, build curricula. Into their into their kind of content, and um, but I think we're going to start to see a lot more collaboration between uh, education uh, associations uh, and um, you know policymakers and also brands to create you know edutainment and educational content for, for children to learn from. Oh, great, um, and. I think, given given our, our audience, it, or you know, certainly the the with the around the distri shows, we work a lot with the consumer technology channel and sort of tech brands. Um, but you know, again, with the kind of the the work that you're doing is is all encompassing for for kids. Uh, are there any any categories, any sort of standout categories that maybe uh, some of the retailers or distributors who are watching should maybe consider if they're looking to sort of expand their lines? Well, I think firstly, just the power of tech. So much now of the, the kids' ecosystem is built in the digital environment, and and that has just become accelerated this year even more so. And we were we were looking actually. We asked children what they're. We look at all parts of the kids' ecosystem, as I mentioned earlier. But we look at um, one of the questions we ask is what what children's favourite brands are, and just looking at in terms of our UK data, there you can see that Apple, Sony, PlayStation, Xbox, and Samsung are all in the top ten. And then across France and Germany, actually Fortnite with the tween boys uh, is one of the top 10 uh, brands. So I think that what we're seeing is a huge increase in terms of retail appetite for, um, for digital content. And that could be in terms of consumer products, licensed products, um, and in terms of innovations. Um, but it, but it's, um, so I think there's, there's huge opportunities from an IP perspective, the gaming side and the digital side is becoming stronger and stronger and retailers are recognizing that especially as increasingly so they're now recognizing that um, for a brand to be successful, it doesn't need a TV advertising campaign. It can be advertised or promoted purely in a digital format, which, which sounds so obvious, but it has taken retailers, you know, probably 10, 15 years to actually come to that conclusion. And we've seen a huge acceleration of that this year. But I think, you know, this year, it, we've been in a bit of a holding pattern. Uh, I think next year, as the vaccine starts to, to spread up, I think, you know, stuff like augmented reality, uh, and really bring into uh, to combine both digital and physical experiences is going to be a huge growth area uh, for technology brands and um, for maybe even traditional, more traditional offline brands to, to collaborate. Uh, and I think with with, with COVID, um, more and more brands have taken a an innovative approach to their product development. And I think that's only going to accelerate and put put um, uh, in, in 21, uh, in 2021 and beyond. Okay. Um... I think yeah, going back to I think some of the reports that you've producing, there's been I think a, a particularly interesting one which has just come out uh, focusing on on future trends. Uh, always something that people want to uh, to hear about. Um, so, based on your your, your research and, and findings, you know what what sort of upcoming trends can we uh, can we look forward to? 
Well, yeah, the report, which if anyone would, anyone would like to download, is available at kidsinsights.com forward slash future forecast. Um, and we've made 10 predictions. We've done this for the last few years. Um, and um, this one was the number of ones, edutainment being one. Um, social shopping is increasingly one. We have, uh, we call it NXP, inexperienced purchasing, is something that we track in terms of how much money children are spending when it comes to in, inexperience or in-app purchasing, uh, which is a significant amount. And I can't remember the figure offhand, but uh, I can say with certainty that children, for example, are spending more money on in-app purchases than they are on toys in the UK out of their own pocket which really just shows the, the speed of change that we're seeing as pocket money is increasingly spent in the digital um, environment. Um, other trends that we're also seeing is, I suppose, the rebirth of family time. Uh, you know, the, the TV has become a key part of family time, but we've seen a huge surge this year in traditional pastimes, traditional board games. Um, and I think one of the areas that we see some significant growth in is gaming companies really tapping into that. Uh, as well to to create family family games and family content, um, so you know the, the social shopping I think is going to be a big one. Um, but we see environment and social responsibility and ethics is increasingly important too. And esports has been a huge area. Uh, again, no surprise this year with a lot of traditional sports maybe being postponed or put on hold as we've gone through COVID. But I think in particular, what's interesting with esports is that. In so many parts now of the children's ecosystem, their heroes are now their peers um, for the first time. So you look at Ryan's Toy Review or Dan TDM, uh, the Minecraft uh, YouTuber, and these are children who are very much looking up to, 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 uh, you know, to younger individuals uh, and their peers, and same across music and, and other elements. And I think the interesting thing with esports is that uh, maybe we're going to start to see our first global uh, kid esport um, uh, celebrity next year because... You know, those, those children have a unique ability that they're actually talking to their peers the same age, they're growing up to them, and it's a lot more maybe tangible uh, and easier for them to relate with, with their audience. So looking at the growth that we've seen in esports um, in, in our data, um, I think that the, the first, you know, David Beckham of esports, but, but a child is, is not far, far away. And I think when that happens, that really does start to, to really change the influencer uh, market and how brands will will really look to engage and interact with children. Brilliant. Okay. Well, Nick, um, thank you again for uh, taking some time to uh, to speak to us in between uh, uh, all of the the necessary things with the Christmas rush. Um, we'll certainly share that link so uh, people can access the the future trends report and obviously more information about uh, Kids Insights. Um, so much more that we could go into, but uh, I think that's. Uh, for, for next year. Um, yeah, thanks again for your time. Sounds great. Thanks very much. Have a great Christmas. Right. Cheers, you too.